tired today. Really long day at work. Had to go out get a bunch of groceries and stuff. That was fun. I got to go to Soundground, get some new comics. That's nice. But anyway, uh, yesterday I watched the next uh, Power Rangers Ninja Storm episode, Beauty and the Beach, which apparently is also the name of that one episode of Pokemon that they cut scenes from or banned or something. I don't know. It's the first thing that comes up when I typed in Beauty and the Beach. So anyway, uh, notes or summary. I'm tired. <laughs> Let's see. One of the things I really like about this episode is this is one of the first times we get to see a lot of Mara and Capri. And I really like Mara and Capri. They're two of my favorite villains from the Disney era. At least until the end of Ninja Storm. The end is kind of weird, but whatever. They're really cool characters. They're really funny characters. I would love to see these actresses come back. It's kind of weird they insist on doing comedic characters now and... I don't know. It seems like these two would work pretty well. Whatever. Moving on. Uh, let's see. So, they're making plans. We don't quite know what their plans are yet. And then, uh, let's see, at, uh... Crap, what's going on? Oh, yeah. At the beach. Let's see, Tori's just been done surfing. She goes up to talk to Shane and Dustin. She's like, oh, hey, what'd that guy want to talk to you guys about? And Dustin, or Shane, I don't remember which one now, is like, <laughs> you're not gonna believe this. That guy wanted to go out with you. And she's like, what? Yeah, we told her you weren't interested. What? Why would you tell him that without me saying so? What? <laughs> and, yeah. It's a... I don't know, it's the type of thing we wouldn't... It's a kind of conversation we don't see anymore in Power Rangers. Oh, and this guy that likes her, we never see him again after this episode, I don't think. So, yeah, no big loss, but whatever. Uh, Anyway, so she's a little ticked off with them, and then... Let's see, later they're at Storm Chargers, and uh, there's a funny little conversation with her, Shane and Dustin, and then the boss, Kelly, comes in, where uh, Shane and Dustin are trying to apologize, but not apologize at the same time, and they're like, well, you're not a girl girl, you're, you're like a guy girl, and then Kelly comes in, you guys better stop talking, you're ma only making it worse or something. <laughs> It's a really good scene. Like, the dialogue in Ninja Storm is really good so far. It's, like, really snappy. Everything just... Like, it feels very natural. Something that, like, in the Saban era, the dialogue sometimes feel kind of dry, like it's clearly scripted. But that's kind of because they weren't going for, like, a casual, realistic uh, teen relationship here, like Nin Ninja Storm is. And I think they do it really well here. I kind of wish the more recent seasons could have been a little bit more like Ninja Storm, since they try to be, like, casual, like, uh, uh, like, modern teenager talk, but, eh, they really can't seem to get it right. So anyway, uh, Tori gets a offer from this magazine, Girl Sport, saying that they want her for a photo shoot, and so then she's like, oh, cool, I'm gonna go to this photo shoot, so then she goes down to the location, and uh, up in the rocks, we see these two mysterious rangers, a dark blue and a dark crimson-ish ranger. And they're speaking in deep voices, and they'd be really ominous if they didn't talk like dude bros. There she is. Yeah, we'll get her soon, bro. I don't know, the bro just makes it really silly. Also, I'm not sure what's up with the deep, garbled voices. Because I've I've seen Ninja Storm a bunch of times. When I was a teenager, this is like the series I saw the most of because I had tapes and DVDs of it. I, it was on TV. I had some of that on tape, I think. So anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, Tori follows the direction. She goes to the photo shoot, and we see Mara and Capri, though Tori isn't immediately aware that it's them. Has she even met Mar and Capri yet? I don't think they've had any major scenes together. Whatever. So anyway, uh, they set up the camera, and it turns out the camera is the trap. They turn on the camera, and it zaps Tori and sucks her into the camera. Or, well, first it makes a double of her, and then it sucks her into the camera. Two for one. Oh, and also they dressed up Tori in a silly outfit. I don't know. <laughs> uh... Let's see. Da, 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 da. Tori tries to call out of the camera, but she can't get through. So then 
the double goes to Storm Chargers and asks Shane and Dustin to take her to Ninja Ops. So then uh, they're going to Ninja Ops. The, meanwhile, the real Tori figures out a way to escape the uh, camera just by uh, using her ninja powers and she like propels herself with water out of the camera. Kind of a simple con uh, resolution to that, but whatever, it works. It's When I was a kid, it's not really the type of thing I thought about. Like, I didn't think about it as kind of a, oh, well, that was really easy. I just kind of accepted it as part of the episode. It feels like a natural part of the episode. Like, she's not in the camera for long before she thinks to do that. And Mar and Capri just leave the camera there. They're not the smartest. <laughs> so then, uh, the double is with Shane and Dustin, and she's kind of giving away that she's not the real Tori. She's really mean, she's loud and obnoxious, and they're like, huh, she's acting weird, isn't she? And then, let's see, oh yeah, the guy from the beginning, uh, who had asked about Tori, he walks by and he's like, hey, and double Tori is like, <laughs> and then she gets in the car and Shane's like, Dude, what, 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 that, what was that? That, that was the guy. And she's like, what guy? Whatever, ninja ops. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then uh, the real Tori shows up, and they're like, whoa, what? And uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Double Tori goes out. They get into a little fight. And then, let's see. Oh, yeah. Uh, the camera turns out to have been a monster. So Shane and Dustin go to fight the monster. Then Tori runs up to join them, and we get one of my favorite scenes in all of Ninja Storm, where they're not sure if she's the double or not. And so then she decides to tell them something that only she knows. Shane, you're afraid of spiders. And Dustin, your real name is Waldo. And then Shane and Dustin have this awesome little scene where uh, Dustin's like, Dude, you're afraid of spiders? What about it, Waldo? I love that. And the way Dustin reacts, just... <laughs> I just love the emotion, just... Yeah. <laughs> Frickin' awesome. Uh, Ninja Storm had some really, like, great uh, comedic moments. I kind of miss in the current se series, they don't really do comedic moments with the Rangers themselves. Occasionally we get stuff... In Dino Fury recently, there was some pretty funny stuff with the Rangers, though I kind of wish it had felt more natural, like it doesn't... Like, I'm going to keep using the word natural here, because that's how it feels. I'm thinking this is probably back when they gave the actors a lot more freedom to ad-lib and just be themselves, and, like, they weren't locked into a script really hard. They had freedom to move around in it, and kind of expand on stuff, and that really helps in scenes like this, especially if they're naturally talented and funny. So then, let's see, they battle the monster, they combine their weapons, they destroy the monster, Lothar orders Regain to revive it, so he presses the button, uh, the monster revives. Oh yeah, and the monster's name is Copybot, and I kept hearing Coffee Pot. When I was a kid, every time I heard the monster's name, I thought he was saying Coffee Pot. Whatever. Anyway, uh, let's see. So they call the Megazord. The Megazord's fighting with the monster, and they can't beat the monster, so Cam calls him up and he says, Rangers, there's something called lightning mode. It'll make your Megazord shrink down and, like, slim down and move faster, but you can only use it for a limited amount of time. Like Ultraman. So then, uh, they activate lightning mode, they defeat the copy bot, and then, uh, let's see, da da da. Later at Storm Charger, Tori runs into the guy from earlier, and, uh, I guess they get along. For however long. Because I don't think the guy ever comes back. Then up in space, Lothor evilly laughs as the two mysterious rangers from earlier show up to inform him everything is going to plan. And Lothor's like, ha 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 ha, the end. So this is a really fun episode. And it's also really fast-paced. Like, I don't remember this episode just zipping by as quick as it did here. Like, when I was a kid, this was an episode I watched a lot because it was on the first uh, volume of the Ninja Storm VHSs and on the DVD. And, yeah, so I've watched these first three episodes a lot because they were what was on that. Let's see. Uh... 
Looking through my notes here. Uh, oh yeah, the monster copy bot speaks in rhymes. Also interesting, I've noticed that these first couple episodes of Ninja Storm, the voice work from, like, the monsters has been pretty good. Oh yeah, and that's something. The audio quality is really bad in this episode. There's a ton of stuff with Mara, Capri, and Tori, and also the other rangers, and just in general, has a really tinny sound to it, really echoey. I'm thinking that must be, like, when they were outside... Like, they shot it live, but there was wind, so they had to re-loop the dialogue because the wind probably messed up the recording. And, yeah. So, so when they shoot stuff live, it sounds okay, but then when they have to, like, re-loop dialogue, it sounds really bad. Like, not the worst, it's still watchable, but it's a major downgrade from the first ten seasons. Anyway, uh, the monster's voices have been pretty good so far. I really like Ninja Storm's voice talent so far. I think it gets weaker later on, where we just have guys who, I don't know, they just don't have a lot of imagination, so they just, they just do a growly voice like this for the monsters. It gets really old. I like when there's some verbal quirks to the monsters. I like when they're not all just growly monsters. Um, see, da 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 Let me get my notes here. One of the other things I was not looking forward to a ninja storm is uh the music at some point stock music becomes like really common there's been a few parts of it here and there so far but nothing really notable it's just in the background and it's usually like behind like original music or at least music that doesn't immediately remind me of stock music but i know later on they use a lot of stock music and it's stock music i know really well because it's the same kind of stock music that four kids would use in uh, Sonic X, and I think Winx Club, and their version of One Piece, and Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh!, and all the shows that four kids uh, got their hands in. Um, I keep, was there something else I wanted to talk Oh yeah, now I remember. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the Thunder Rangers. The two mysterious rangers that show up at the beginning, and then they pop up again at the end. They're a really awkward inclusion into this, because this episode is a really good standalone episode, but then they're shoved in. They just don't feel natural to it. They don't feel necessary. They don't serve any purpose. And the whole garbled, deep voice thing is just... I don't know. I can't remember if they actually explain that when they do reveal who they are. So, yeah, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya.